on this review video I have everything sort of pre-done I want it to be something that's a little bit quicker for you rather than you watching me write everything out so um, let's take a look at this uh, this is a really good review for an exam type of um, type of thing that we'll be doing shortly but um, if you understand pretty much all of this you you should feel like you're you should be really confident that you can do well um, if you don't quite get everything, um, that's that's all right. That's what this is for. Um, you can of course rewind and you know, fast forward to different parts that you uh, you want to take a look at. Slow slow it down, speed it up, whatever you need to do, in order to feel comfortable with the material. That's the whole purpose of this. All right, and of course, if you're still having some issues, if, um, get get a hold of me in seminar or any other um, any other way. Remind, email, and we'll make sure you get things sorted out. All right, so this first question here. Uh, we've got this motorcyclist that's riding a distance of 300 miles in four and a half hours, and we want to know their average speed. Uh, the nice thing here is this this formula we can narrow it down right away to the nice, concise one. This one that's uh, I, I think of it as kind of an easier formula, but I guess that's not necessarily the case for you know for everyone. It's easier when compared to some of these other things for sure, though. But um, we don't have any acceleration, so as soon as we don't have any acceleration in the problem, we can we can use this formula in either way. Remember, this isn't like two separate formulas or anything like that. It's actually the same formula, just just rearranged. Um, I typically write it like this, just because for aesthetic purposes, there's there's no weird fraction in there. Um, it looks kind of messy to me, so I tend to tend to go this route, so I don't have to deal with the fractions. Of course, there's going to be times when you do have to deal with the fractions in the in the work. Um, but that's another story. So we know that the distance is 300 miles. We've narrowed it down to this formula because there's no acceleration. We know the time is four and a half, and I'm solving for V. Um, so at this step right here, I had 300 equals four and a half times V. And remember, when you do get to something like this, don't think of it as, you know, am I multiplying or dividing the numbers? Think of it, how do I get that V by itself? Well, currently it's being multiplied by four and a half, so we've got to divide it by four and a half to get V by itself. And of course, if we do it to one side, We've got to do it to the other side as well, as we already know. And then, I, and then I'm left with, and how I normally write this out, V equals, I'll leave a space and have just the meters per second there because I know it's a velocity. I know that it's uh, in, in units of some sort of distance per time increment, in this case, meters per second. So then I'm ready to just drop my answer in. Of course, as with anything, have an answer in your head already of what this should be around, you know, 300 divided by... 5 should be somewhere around 60, you know, or would be 60 in that case. So 300 divided by 4.5 should still be somewhere around 60-ish. You know, it shouldn't be wildly different um, than that. And it looks like we're pretty good shape. 66.7 is, is close enough to what I would estimate in my head, so I know that I didn't make any sort of calculator errors. And remember, that step is really, really, really key um, to do the estimation in your head for a number of reasons, just to make sure that you're not making mistakes, but um, way more importantly to make sure that you're developing a good number of sense. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this next problem. We've got Bozo the Clown uh, traveling at a constant speed of five meters a second in his little clown car. Uh, makes me laugh. How far will the car travel in 30 seconds? So again, this is a nice um, quick problem because we don't have to deal with acceleration so I don't have to deal with any of the longer formulas here I uh, have one velocity it's the, the average velocity so it's not specifying is this an initial or a final we're just sort of assuming that this is a, a constant velocity here so I'm dropping that into as for V at five meters a second and then I'm able to drop the 30 seconds in for T there and south. The nice thing is the formula tells us what to do. It's V times T, so 5 times 30 gives me the 150. And of course the distance, so meters is uh, meters would be the, the go-to unit for that. Of course there could be other units as well for distance, but we'll typically see meters for distance, seconds for time, meters per second for velocity, and meters per second squared for acceleration. Um, let's take a look at the, the next problem here. So hopefully that one was pretty straightforward where you didn't even necessarily need a calculator because you could have done 5 times 3 is 15 and then tack on a 0 afterwards. All right, so Enrique Iglesias is cruising down the roads of Miami, Florida. I think that's his hometown. Anyone remember what Enrique Iglesias, who he, who he is? Um, I think it might have been before some of your time, but uh, singer. And an average speed of 75 miles an hour. So that's our, that's our velocity that we're dealing with. And we want to know how long it would take him to get to 
Tampa Bay, Florida. If he was going 260, if he was 265 miles away, and this is the math that we used to have to do before the, you know, Google Google Maps and Apple Maps and all those other um, programs, uh, MapQuest and stuff like that, uh, where they just sort of tell you this is about how long you're going to take to get somewhere. Um, we had, you used to have to figure out well, what's about the average speed limit, and um, so you sort of estimated how how long it would take you to get somewhere. You know, you were usually off by you know half an hour, an hour or so. Um, could be even longer than that if it was a, a real far far trip. But in this case, pretty quick trip, or no, not a quick trip. Sorry, 265 miles away, and I actually just realized I made an error here. See if you can catch it before I get to it. So we got 265 miles that he's traveling 75 meters uh, miles an hour sorry that he is traveling at so plugging it into my d equals v times t formula because again i'm not dealing with an acceleration here i get 265 equals 75 times t so remember again when you get down to this step it's really important not to look at this as you know am i multiplying or dividing but instead look at it as how do i get that how do i get that t by itself well currently t is being multiplied by 75 so let's do some division in order to get it by itself and of course do the same thing to the other side um, that you do to, that you do to this side um, and hopefully you've caught what my my error was time is should not be in seconds if he's going if he's 265 miles away and he's taking 3.53 seconds to get there that's uh, he's going a little over the speed limit right now that's not not physically possible so that's an oops on mr. Beatty's part there it should be in hours um, let's maybe go ahead and change that to hours. All right. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last uh, last problem for these constant velocity type practice problems. So we got Anna turning into ice because Elsa accidentally froze her heart. Um, she's got about 25 seconds until she freezes. Kristoff is 260 meters away from Anna. How fast will Kristoff have to run to make it to Anna for true for a true love's kiss to save her from freezing? Very cute, isn't it? Uh, you could probably tell if you had Miss Mardoyan before. Uh, she used to teach physics with me. Um, this is a problem that that she wrote, um, very Miss Mardoyan esque, right? Uh, I love it though. So again, we don't have any sort of acceleration here. So we can use the constant velocity formula. There are times when we don't have an acceleration that's in the problem uh, that we might be solving for an acceleration, but we're not even solving for an acceleration here either. So we know we're good to go with the constant velocity formula. I know that Kristoff's 260 meters away. Um, I know that it is taking him or taking him 25 seconds to get to um, or should take him under 25 seconds to get to Anna. Um, now we need to figure out: Is he gonna? What you know? What's the velocity that he's got to be going at in order to save his bride here, or soon-to-be bride? So, how fast will he run? Well, I know I'm looking for a velocity here. Um, again, when you get down to a step like this, and you have 25 times v, you should only be looking at the v um, to begin with and saying, "Well, how do I get that v by itself?" Um, currently, it's being multiplied by 25, so let's divide it by 25. If we do one thing, if we do something to one side, we've got to do it to the other side. Rules of algebra, um, so it doesn't change anything on one side without changing the other at the same rate. And again, I should have sort of a an idea in my head of what the answer should be. You know, 260 divided by 25. Well, if this was 250 divided by 25 or 260 divided by 26, it'd be around 10ish. Either way, I could estimate that. Um, so I know that I'm going to be right around 10. It's not going to be very far away from that at all. And when I throw it in my calculator, 260 divided by 25 gives me that 10.4. It is really close to what I had estimated. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some additional motion practice problems. So here we will see that um, we're going to get into some formulas where we, where we do have to deal with acceleration. Um, and we'll look at how we can actually narrow those down um, here as well. So Jack and Jill standing at the top of a hill to fetch pale water. Uh, another Miss Mordoyne problem. Jack fell down, broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after for 45 seconds, gaining a final velocity of 65 meters per second. So a little bit of an added bonus there to the uh, to the fairy tale, right? And we want to figure out the acceleration that Jill is tumbling down at. Um, so we, we do have to realize that 
motion can be denoted in a couple of directions. One, uh, we could be dealing with motion in the vertical direction, so like literally falling straight down. Uh, two, we could be going straight forward. It's a terrible line, but uh, straight, straight forward going this way. But in reality, what's actually happening here is we have uh, Jack and Jill, they're, they're actually not tumbling straight down. They're actually tumbling at an angle. Uh, and to really fully understand what's happening here, we have to get into something called components, which uh, is more of a, of a discussion in some future units that we're going to be dealing with, because right now we've really only been dealing with motion in one direction, either forwards, backwards, um, down, or up, but not really a combination of vertical and horizontal components. Um, so in reality, Jill's and Jack, they're going to be they're going to be taking this path. We could break that path up into partially, um, partially forward movement and partially downward movement in order to make this problem a little bit um, easier if we were dealing with two dimensions here. Like I said, that's kind of a talk for another time. I do want to at least sort of preview where we're going to be going with things, though. So um, let's figure out the acceleration that they're tumbling tumbling down at. Um, we've got a couple of different formulas that we could potentially be using. All right, the one that's here, and let me show you why we narrowed it down to this particular formula, because we do, of course, have this other one that we could be using as well, um, as well as the constant velocity formula, which could be written in a couple of different ways, either v equals d over t or d equals v times t. All right, so we know that we're looking for acceleration, so that's what helped me narrow it down um, in terms of my formulas, and I was able to get rid of these ones because they don't deal with acceleration. Now, a really common um, common issue, a common problem that kind of spikes um, in, in physics is picking this formula because it's easier to deal with. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, we've got 45 seconds here that we could plug into this formula, and we've got 65 meters per second there. If we only look at those two numbers and we don't deal with the problem, we're going to come out with something, but it's actually not going to be correct. Uh, we would be we would be solving for a an incorrect uh, distance, first of all, and it's not even asking us for distance. Um, secondly it wouldn't be mimicking what's happening in the problem. The problem has some sort of acceleration that's occurring. We just don't happen to know that acceleration quite yet, but we're, we're doing that, we're finding that. Um, so if it doesn't have acceleration in there, and these formulas are meant to mimic what's happening in the real world, in fact, we get these formulas by making observations about the, the real world, so to speak, well then, that's kind of a problem uh, for me to, to use that formula because it's not, it's not actually mimicking the scenario. So that's why I can get rid of this one. Um, and then we've got a couple of formulas here that do deal with acceleration. So right now, either one of these are fair game. Of course, we know which one it's going to end up being because it's right there. But how did I narrow it down to this final one? Well, I don't know the amount of displacement that's occurring here. I don't know how far Jack has fallen over the course of this um, over the course of this scenario. So unfortunately, without that information and without acceleration, information well there's two variables there that are going to remain open and I'm not going to be able to solve for one of them uh, or for both of them so in this um, final final formula then I do know the initial acceleration they're just standing at the top of the hill so if they're just standing around that actually tells me quite a bit my initial velocity is zero meters per second um, so there's going to be times in these problems where you do have to read into it a little bit more. You have to make some inferences. All right, so let's take a look at how we solve this out. We know our final velocity. We know our initial velocity, again, was zero because we're standing. Uh, standing still to begin with. We're looking for an acceleration, and we know our time is 45 seconds that um, they're tumbling down for. So you don't even necessarily have to write in the zero here because that's not gonna that's not gonna change anything with your math. If it freaks you out not to fill the variable or just cross off a variable, then of course go through and put the um, put the number in there for that. And later on, your math will sort itself out. And it doesn't matter how many sub steps you take. You know, somebody might end up taking four sub steps. I ended up taking three sub steps. There's not a proper amount. Um, it's gonna be different for everybody in terms of how you're gonna show your thought process for a problem. 
All right, so let's go ahead and finish this off. We know zero plus a times 45 is gonna, not gonna change a times 45, so we're gonna have 45a there. Other side of things we can't do anything with yet, so I just dropped it down. Um, and then when I got to this portion, again, my thinking was, how do I get a by itself? Well, currently it's being multiplied by 45, so let's divide. If I do it to one side, I've gotta do it to the other. And I already have a, an answer somewhere, an answer kind of in my head, where I believe, let's see, 65 divided by 45, you know, that's, 45 is pretty close to 65 to begin with, so I'm going to get a number that's around one-ish. Um, if this was a little bit less, like 32 and a half, I would be around two-ish, so I know it's going to be somewhere between one and two. Um, not dead center, a little bit closer to, the, to one than it would be two. And um, I see that, in fact, it is uh, you know, one, 1 1.4 meters per second squared. And again, that meters per second squared is important um, for, the, for the problem. But remember that anytime you see the squared here, that doesn't actually change anything mathematically. It's simply part of the unit. Um, so a common, common issue, uh, not, not majorly common, but would be for students to take this answer and then square it. Uh, we don't do anything like that just because just like we wouldn't multiply by m or divide by s well we wouldn't square anything either here it's simply part of the unit because remember what this unit actually means is meters per second per second uh, so we just more concisely write the unit as meters per second squared all right so i know that's quite a bit to to get through on that one if you need to of course um, slow the video down, replay it, whatever you have to, to do if you don't feel comfortable with it quite yet. And I'd encourage you to rework this page if this is something that you're looking at this video for the first time and sort of following along. Um, be careful with how you use that because obviously that's not going to be something that you're able to do on a, on a test or a quiz or any sort of assessment type thing. Um, a lot of times if you're watching the video and following along while you're doing your work, it can give you a false sense of security that you're understanding things a little bit better than you than you may be. So I'm hoping that you're using this as just simply a um, a means to get past a uh, part of a problem that was giving you you know giving you some problems for a while, and it wasn't something that was just like oh you know I, I couldn't figure the problem out the first go around, so let's watch the the video right away. All right. So let's take a look at this next problem here. I changed it to how long was the hill that Jack tumbled down in the previous problem because if we were talking about height, we're actually going to be we would actually be dealing with how tall this hill was and that would be an entirely different acceleration. That would actually be the acceleration due to gravity that we would be using in this problem of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But um, because that is the acceleration due to gravity, the force of gravity, on Earth at least. So if Jack were just falling off the top of this hill, that'd be kind of a morbid problem, but then, then we would be able to figure out the true height. Here we actually have to figure out the length, because we know the acceleration of Jack and Jill going down the hill this way is 1.4 meters per second squared. So in other words, we are going to be finding the distance based on that acceleration of the actual face of the hill, so how, how long this thing actually is, instead of how high. So just realize that um, it might not be a huge point of confusion quite yet, but I don't want it to um, harm anything in the long run and miss that before the, before the sheet came out. So how did I narrow it down to this formula? Um, well, we're looking for how, how high or how long. Right. So right away we know that we're dealing with something that's meters or a displacement um, that, we're, that we're dealing with. And the only formula that has to do with displacement and acceleration is this one. Right. The other formula doesn't deal with uh, displacement and the constant velocity formula doesn't deal with acceleration. So to deal with both of those we've got to use that middle equation. Alright, so my um, initial velocity, we know it's just just from the previous problem, they were standing still to begin with. So that's where I am getting this zero uh, meters per second from. I know that they're taking 45 seconds to uh, go their entire entire route of travel. And there's two times in here. These are not two separate times. They will always be the same time for both of these 
um, variables in this in this particular equation because basically how this equation works is the first part of the equation looks a heck of a lot like our constant velocity equation right and in fact it actually is um, this would be assuming that I wasn't accelerating if I knew a, a velocity and how long I was traveling for then I would know the distance that I'm traveling the second part of the equation assumes that I don't have an initial velocity to begin with but I'm just I just have some sort of acceleration knowledge times the amount of time that I'm traveling for of course squared and halved and all that sort of stuff but this for part of the formula deals with just the acceleration side of things so if I have an initial velocity to begin with and I accelerate on top of that then I can figure out the entire distance that I have traveled um, so in this case we didn't have any initial velocity so that's not going to give us any sort of distance um, to move and in fact there's a lot of times where you can cross off the first part of this formula and just deal with the one half at squared because many times we'll have an initial velocity of zero um, and again if that freaks you out to like no wait a second I can just you know, cross off a formula what does it, how what do you mean by that then go ahead and leave it in there and the math is going to work itself out for you uh, it's going to get rid of that because zero times 45 later on is going to be zero and when we add that zero to everything else it's going to be the same as just disregarding that first part of the formula simply because initial velocity is zero well, we wouldn't be able to disregard the first part of this formula if there was any other number for that initial velocity other than zero of course all right so the second side of things here a um, very common problem on this particular practice problem is not knowing the acceleration but we actually do it was from the from the previous problem here um, that I am that I am getting that from we solve for 1.4 meters per second squared so it's still 1.4 meters per second squared because it's just a continuation of the former problem um, and if you got this wrong obviously that's going to change your answer down here so that's why it's really important to check over your work especially when dealing with a multi-part um, problem so that you're not you're not dealing with any issues in the in the long haul all right uh, we already know where that time came from so let's go ahead and solve it out I generally will not look at this as one big problem and that's something that um, if you if you are struggling with displacement problems may end up um, causing you a little bit of pain if you if you do look at this as one big problem so I like to break it down into multiple um, so this next step, I just got rid of the zero, right? And then I dropped everything down. Uh, one half, 1.4, the 45 squared. I haven't done anything with it quite yet. Um, you don't have to show, again, you know, this many sub-steps. I like to just for clarity. But um, if you wanted to show, you know, just a couple of sub-steps, plugging every, you know, you plugging all your numbers into the equation, showing another sub-step down here, and then the final answer, that's great. If you want to show as many as I did, that's cool too. So usually what I'll do is I will look at this in terms of an order of operations problem. If you think back to PEMDAS, is it please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, parentheses, we got to work over those first. Well, there's nothing in parentheses here that I can really do. Exponents, so I do have an exponent here. 45 squared is this 2025 that it gives me. Um, like that old game, 2048. It's uh, 2025 here. Um, on the other side of things, then I can reduce the 1 half and the 1.4, either divide 1.4 by 2 or multiply by a half. Either way, you're going to get 0.7. Um, and I, again, really have a, an answer in my head already. You know, 7 times 2 would be 14. Uh, well, moving my decimal around, it would become 14, 1400, would be 0.7 times 2000 which is really, really close to the 2025 that is here. So I should know, after I plug this into my calculator, I should get something really close to 1400, which, in fact, I, uh, I do. So we know that we're in pretty, pretty good shape. All right. Um, so the next problem is very, very similar, where we have an object, in this case, Mater, starting from rest he's speeding down highway 65 I like to cross that off just because it's just a highway number it doesn't actually give us any information for the problem it's kind of a little bit of a distractor um, just like you could be driving down interstate 90 but going 65 miles an hour uh, that that 90 doesn't actually mean anything for your motion just the name of the highway so you got to catch up to Lightning McQueen who's at a pit stop getting his tire pressure checked 
Mater made it to the pit stop that was 4,800 meters away in 120 seconds, and we want to know what his, his constant acceleration was. All right, so this is a little bit more of a challenge just because we have to solve for acceleration, and we've got to get rid of a lot of things in order to do that, but it's still very manageable. We know our displacement. I know that I'm using this formula here because I'm dealing with an acceleration and displacement, and this, out of all the formulas that we have, is the only one that deals with both of those concepts. Um, in one formula. I know that Mater is 4,800 meters away, so that's where I'm getting that from. Um, I know that he's starting from rest, which is where I'm getting this zero from. I know that he is taking 120 seconds over the course of his travel, and again we've got to plug that in for both times since the first part of the formula deals with, with no acceleration and the second part does deal with acceleration, so we've got to add those together. Uh, those times will never be different. And then, of course, the half and the square, that's part of the formula, so we leave those alone. And I know that um, uh, and I know that 120 squared, so when I get down to this next part of the, the formula here, is 100, or sorry, 14,400. Um, how I did this one, rather than throwing it in the calculator, is I thought, well, what's 12 squared? 12 times 12 is 144. But really, instead of 12 times 12, it's 120 times 120, which is the same thing as 12 times 12, tack on two zeros in the end. Um, so a lot of this problem you can actually solve without a, without a calculator. And then I just converted the 1 half to 0.5. No reason other than that's kind of how my, um, how my mind operates. Um, you can leave it as a, a fraction like that and be perfectly fine. So then when we get down to this this part of the formula here, this part of the problem, I guess I should say, it's not uh, not a different formula or anything like that, um, I look at a couple things that I can do. A zero, there's nothing I can really do there. Um, 0.5 and A and 14,400. Um, now that I've taken, taken into account my 120 squared is this number, I no longer have the squared that I have to deal with, so everything gets its own um, it, it's all within the same order of operations, right? This is all multiplication in the end. So I could do 0 0.5 times A times 14,400. I could do 0 0.5 times 14,400 times A, A times those. It doesn't matter which, which way I multiply here because they're, they're all within the same order of operations if you think back to your PEMDAS there. So basically um, what I did here is I took 0 0.5 times 14,400, uh, which would be 72. Um, that doesn't, um, it, it just re remains 7,200 7, times A. We didn't, uh, of course, we don't get rid of the, the A at all. So then at this point here, after I have simplified things down to 7,200 A, now it becomes a, a much simpler problem. I don't have to deal with all this stuff at once. Um, so I would recommend breaking it down as much as possible. So let's get A by itself. Of course, the same question is not, you know, do I multiply or divide the numbers? It's just how do I get A by itself? Well, A is currently being multiplied by 7,200, so let's divide it. And if we do it to one side, we got to do it to the other. So I'm left with 40, 48 out of 72 is about 2 thirds. Um, so that's where I'm getting this 0.67 from. Of course, you could plug it into the, the calculator, 4,800 divided by 7,200, and you're going to come out with... 0.67 as well, and we're dealing with meters and seconds, so our acceleration is going to be in meters per second squared. So a challenging problem. And the very last problem here um, that we're going to be going through, at least in this video, uh, is dealing with Optimus Prime here and Bumblebee starting from rest, and they're accelerated at a constant rate of 160 kilometers an hour squared. So in other words, every hour that they're traveling, they're going another 160 kilometers an hour. If they were to travel another hour, they would pick up an additional 160 kilometers hours per squared of, uh, or another 160, sorry, kilometers per hour in that hour. Um, so we want another velocity at the end of five hours. So as soon as I see something that talks about velocity at the end, that actually gives it, gives it away right away. Uh, the only formula that deals with a final velocity is this formula out of our out of our three options, so we uh, don't know the final velocity. That's the whole point of the problem, right? We do know that the initial velocity doesn't tell us specifically, but it does say starting from rest, which we would infer is zero. 
kilometers per hour um, and it's over the course of half an hour 0.5 hours that this is this is happening so in the end it just becomes 160 times 0.5 which gives me the 80 kilometers an hour would be the final velocity um, after after speeding up here all right which 160 kilometer hours squared in terms of an acceleration seems like it's a lot but it's actually not very much at all um, when we think about it we've been traveling for half an hour and we've just gotten up to 80 kilometers an hour um, pretty pretty slow rate of acceleration so I hope this problems helped I hope that answer key um, explanation helped if you need any additional help of course email me or send me a remind and we'll make sure that everything gets sorted out for you see you